it's time for Tech Talk on Ben Jam 91.5. And in Studio 2, I've got Matthew Dickerson. G'day, Matthew. Good afternoon, Tony. Great to be chatting after this morning session. Oh, did I say good morning? No, not at all. Oh, I thought I must have said good morning. No. It's afternoon. It's <laughs> afternoon. Yes. You can tell it's afternoon because it's hot. Well, yes, isn't it what? Yes. But uh, I wouldn't know it because uh, in the studio here it's quite nice, I have to say. <laughs> now, do you wipe over your shopping trolley, Matthew, when you go to the supermarket like I do? I don't, Tony, because I'm hoping that they've already done that for me when I turn up to the supermarket. Hopefully someone's been wiping them over. But apparently that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and it's very difficult to get the whole trolley wiped over completely. So there's a supermarket in South Australia, of all places, obviously, that's uh, basically doing a nationwide trial or a nationwide first for a trial that might be rolled out across the nation where effectively they're running all their trolleys through a sanitizer unit. And what the sanitizer unit does is it basically sprays a water-based solution on the trolley. So it's not just the handle that you hold onto, the entire trolley. Shopping baskets can sit in there as well. So basically everything can be sprayed as it goes through. And it's as simple as when the person collecting the trolleys from the car park brings them up, instead of just taking them straight into the storage location at the supermarket, they basically go through this unit on their way into storing them, ready for shoppers to come and pick them up. So they're then safe and ready to go. The trial started, they'll be doing some testing on the trolleys to see that they are actually completely clean and they're germ-free and and they've got no traces of COVID-19 on them, which is obviously the main focus of all this. And if that trial is successful, then this will be rolled out across South Australia and then hopefully across Australia. There's an organisation that's an overseas design for it, but the manufacturing will be done in South Australia if this goes ahead. So good to see that from a manufacturing perspective in Australia, but also good to see other solutions rather than having a good old-fashioned wipe and and wiping it over. And sometimes I do worry in some of those supermarkets, they seem to be using the same cloth to wipe everything over, and you do wonder whether they're just picking up some some germs from one location and spreading them around every other location. Yeah, well, necessity is the mother of invention, that's for sure. Absolutely. And... And it's interesting to see all these different new things have come up with to help defeat this coronavirus. It's uh, it bodes well for the future because you can't always have those vaccines at the ready, can you? No, exactly now, right. But uh, could killing a coronavirus be as simple as applying a new coat of paint, maybe? Well, Corning Gorilla Glass believes that might be the solution. Now. Gorilla Glass is something that we are familiar with because it's on most of our smartphones and and Corning is the company that makes that Gorilla Glass. But they've come up with something called Guardiant, which is a a paint additive. And they're working with some paint manufacturers at the moment to basically get that into those paints so that if you actually paint a wall with this Guardiant added paint, then the tests so far show that that'll kill 99.9% of COVID-19 viruses. So effectively, you paint a wall, obviously you'd work in places like, say, hospitals, supermarkets that we've just talked about, and then effectively anyone that touches that wall, that virus won't live on there. So great idea. They've worked on some simulations where they've done six years of cleaning a wall, so getting to that point where they've, they've simulated that so that effectively they're saying it's going to be useful for a long period of time. And I think your point's very valid, Tony, that we've got COVID-19 today, but who knows what we're going to have next week, next year, next decade. So having paints like this in those high traffic areas, those areas where you really want to make sure you don't have any viruses, as I said, say a hospital, for example, I think is a, is a great example. Apparently copper is the key ingredient in this, uh, and, and copper has been shown to be very effective against the coronavirus. So, uh, yeah, good good development of something that seems like a very simple thing, just painting walls with a different paint. Yeah, it, it is quite important because they've done research on things like door handles and uh, contrary to what uh, has been the previous thinking on uh, disease transmission, um, stainless steel and some of these other metals that they use um, to try and keep things clean and surfaces clean um, haven't been as effective as they had expected. No, that's right. Particularly against, particularly against coronavirus. So yeah. and that's I do, interesting, isn't it? It is, and I do remember reading a, an article about 
copper handrails where sometimes people have got stairs with copper handrails and, and that copper is effective, uh, very effective, so even better than things like you said, stainless steel, for example. So it's not all, always the obvious things, but that's where you've got these researchers around the world working on different things and sometimes they're experimenting, sometimes they're trying different things, sometimes they accidentally come across things. So uh, there's lots of work being done and, and we'll see a different world as we progress through this. Yeah, and of course, stainless steel is pretty much the go-to surface when it comes to food handling. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, Matthew, the, um, the highly anticipated Rivian electric truck, which we've talked about before, mm. it's an SUV, and it'll be out next year, but it's going to be interesting to see what the cost is. So surprise everybody. Well, they they finally announced the pricing. You're quite right, they've got... Two vehicles, we've talked about them. They've got a truck, and that's the American term truck, which is basically what we would call a, a big ute. But they've got a truck and they've got an SUV. And uh, they, they first talked to them back in about 2018, but they'll be getting customers by the middle of next year. So they've got those two editions. Their, their pricing for their launch editions are US $75,000 for the truck and $77,500 for the SUV. And that's US dollars, don't forget. So they'd be both over $100,000 in our terms. And, and that sounds yeah. expensive, but in America, you've got people who pay a lot of money for their big trucks. They they trick them up and they put some ridiculous ends in them and have stereos that are blasting out. So spending a hundred thousand dollars on uh, Aussie dollars on a truck over in America is not something that sounds as ridiculous as, as we would think. But even in here, we've got a lot of people who yeah. buy their uh, Land Cruisers, their Hiluxes, some of those big yep. vehicles, and they're, right. they're spending over $100,000. So uh, That's right. they sound expensive, but they've got some pretty impressive specs. The initial ones will come out with 400, 480 kilometres of range. Uh, they've got a version coming out in 2022 that's got 640 kilometre range. So they're getting good range out of them. Uh, they're, they're great from a four-wheel drive perspective. If you want to go bush with these vehicles, they're fantastic. Uh, they've got all sorts of features that are designed for people that are towing large trailers, five-ton trailers, for example. So they really are made for those people who want to have that classic SUV, that large SUV or that large truck. They've got a five and a seven-seat version of them. So, look, they do sound expensive, but I think there's a lot of Americans who will jump all over these, and then it'll be interesting to see how the export market goes. They're really focused on the American market initially, but obviously there is an export market there if these are proven to be successful in America. I, I think they'll be successful everywhere uh, at that price, actually, because uh, they're cost-effective when compared to some alternatives that you've just mentioned. Yeah. So that's okay. really great to see that. Yeah. yeah, and look, there's some competition coming, some electric vehicle competition coming. You've got Tesla Cybertruck, of course. You've got General Motors. Yeah. You've got the Hummers that we've talked about before. Ford have got their big F-150s and electric versions. There's new players, Lordstown, Bollinger. So it's a pretty hot market over there. And, and manufacturers realise that there are a lot of Americans who want to own and drive these type of vehicles. So they're really attacking that market. Yeah. And you'll be listening to Tech Talk on Vinjay 91.5 with Matthew Dickerson. Stick around and we'll have some great music and community information. 